I'm gonna prove to you that you can make some stunning fine furniture with nothing but two by fours from the Home Center. And this video is brought to us by Squarespace. We are back from the Home Depot. I was pretty darn picky about the two by fours that I picked. Even though I was picky, these boards still are not straight, they're not flat, there's some things that we need to work around. We're gonna do everything in our power to make these two by fours look as good as possible. We're gonna make some fine furniture. First thing I need to do is rough cut these to length and then we start planing down and seeing what we got. I just wanna interrupt and say, this is Pachuto from the future here. And I just wanna say that I knew that this was going to come out pretty good, but I did not expect it to come out this freaking good. I am absolutely blown away. The planer was causing these little fuzzies on there, so now I'm running everything through the drum sander to get that beautiful, fine woodworking finish. So I've got five of the six sides of each board milled up. Now I have to cut this to width, but on the bottom here, I want this to flare out. So on the table saw, I'm gonna come down and I'll stop about right here, and then I'll finish this off over on the bandsaw. Using some tape to gang them all up, made sure that they all came out exactly the same shape and size. There'll be two legs up front, two legs in the back. Now I have to go to the table saw and cut a groove that's going to hold the sides and the back. I said I was gonna cut this dado over at the table saw. I changed my mind. The router is a better tool for this operation. And I just changed my mind again. Instead of doing any of that, I think I should cut the rails that's going to go all the way around this first, because that's gonna help me with some measurements. So stop changing your mind and start cutting. I get a lot of comments like, you talk too much. Shut up and cut. You talk too much. You talk too much. On the bottom of all of these, I am going to draw a little arc. Arch or arc? Arc. Arch. Arch. Arc. Arch. Arch. Arc. We're gonna draw one of those. I'm going to cut out a little arc on the bottom of all of these, just decorative, just to make it look fancy. So before I cut that arc out, I want to cut a dado on the bottom of all these, except for the front pieces. Just kind of figuring this out as I go. Um, to hold the sides and back panels. I gotta remember to not cut too many because there's not gonna be a front panel. I've got, I've got a plan for the front as long as I don't fuck this up. I've got everything kind of rough assembled here. Now it still might look a little bulky and two by four-y. Take it easy, 
take it easy. I got a plan. This is gonna look really good. This is one of like the cool thing about this is normally a lot of times we're just working with three quarter inch material because we're working with inch and a quarter material. We get to play around with different looks. And if I was gonna use inch and a quarter walnut for this, this would be kind of an expensive project. So I am really happy. I think this is gonna look really good. So I need to make the three panels that's going to go in the back and the sides, and they're just gonna float within these grooves. And the reason they're gonna float in there is because it's gonna expand and contract, and this stuff wasn't dried properly, or at least not dried to fine woodworking conditions. So these boards are gonna move quite a bit. So I just want them to free float in these grooves here. So back to some two by fours, cutting, resawing, gluing, flattening, sanding, and cutting. In that order. Now we're gonna glue up these panels. So these have been sitting in the clamps for a few minutes. We're gonna take them out and plane them down. The middle shelf and the bottom shelf are just going to sit on a couple of dowel pins that we're going to cut. I don't want them permanently attached in there just because of expansion and contraction. If I was using plywood, I wouldn't have to worry about that. So the middle one is going to go in optical center. If you, that's a graphic design term, meaning just above actual center. Your eyes see optical center as center. It's a, it's a whole thing. I went to school for graphic design. I ended up being a terrible graphic designer, but I, I remember one thing from college, optical center. So, Daniel? You were a very successful graphic designer. I did okay, I did okay. Liar. I did okay. Liar. All right, to the drill press. So we drilled the holes, and now we pound some pegs. So we drilled these holes, and we'll pound these pegs. Now it's time to cut the joinery so we can join things together. I guess that's why they call it joinery. Join and join, yeah. Huh. Huh. Gluing everything together and adding the Festool biscuits. I don't like sanding, I don't like finishing, I don't like using the router, but I think the thing that I don't like the most, besides just woodworking in general, is assembly. That is, it's so stressful, but it all goes to get, like you're tightening clamps and you hear things cracking and it's trying to twist and get into place and it's looking good. It's looking really good. My favorite comments, my second favorite comments are the comments of like me using like a Festool Domino and then next thing I'm using Harbor Freight clamps. <laughs> People find that funny. I just, I'm just using the best tool for the job. What do you think, Dale? Fishing for compliments. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> Let's go yeah, always fishing for compliments. I am very, very pleased with that. It kind of has a grandma feel 
So we're gonna, we're gonna modernize this with some doors and the top. So let's start with the two doors that are gonna go on here and it's gonna eliminate that grandma feel. No offense to grandmas out there. I love all the ladies from the 80s, the 1880s. <laughs> All right, so got that milled up. Time to glue it up with some glue. Those of you who are offended by the grandma comments, I'm very sorry. I mean, no offense to your grandma, but let's be honest. If you're offended by grandma comments, maybe you to get rid of the grandma-ness of this cabinet, I am going to carve in a design on the doors here with the Stepcraft M1000. This is gonna be a real simple pattern, but I think a lot of times simplicity is the best option. What do you think, Daniel? Hell yeah. He agrees. I'm just, he, he'll agree with anything that I say. Your grandma's a whore. <laughs> Were you holding that one in? Now we can cut this in half, cut that, that arc in there, and we'll have our two doors. We'll have a couple nice looking knobs right there. So now I need to transfer this arc to the top of these pieces. So I'm just gonna set this in here and trace that out. Paint those grooves black and then we'll sand down the top and we'll have this cool contrast. Almost done. We have to head to the store to get some dye. I want to cover up the pine and try to make it look fancy as possible. And while doing so, I'd like to tell you about today's sponsor, and that is Squarespace. I've been using Squarespace for like, what, 10 years now? Almost 10 years, way before they were a sponsor. You're probably a lot like me. You're a maker, a woodworker, an artist, a crafter. You need a place to show up. You work, you need a place to gather clients. You need a website. Squarespace is the perfect place to do so. I've been using Squarespace so long. Before I was doing this full time, and I used to be a professional web developer. I used to sit at work all day at a computer making websites. And then I used to come home, sit at a computer all night working on freelance websites. I'm so glad I don't have to do that anymore. It takes a lot of time and it's not where I want to focus my time anymore. I want to focus my time on making things. I want to, I want to, I want to, I want to be in the shop. I don't want to be in front of a computer making a website. And that's where Squarespace comes in because it's super easy to set up. You don't need to know a thing about the code, cloud, backend, HTML, none of that. You can just 
focus on what matters to you. Galleries are easy. You have a number of galleries to choose from. You can sell things. You have an unlimited amount of things that you can sell in Squarespace. It just makes my life so much easier and it can make your life so much easier as well. I get a lot of comments when I drive this car saying, you need to wear your seatbelt. You're setting a bad example. This is a 1967 Impala. It doesn't have a shoulder belt, only a lap belt. So get off my back get off my back. And while you're getting off my back, visit squarespace.com. And when you're ready to launch, visit squarespace.com slash make something for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. We got our supplies. We're going to head back to the shop as fast as we can to get this finished up and just show you how freaking good this looks. It looks so good. Daniel, tell me it looks good. Are we there yet? Daniel, tell me it looks good. I will turn this car around. Last thing we're gonna do that's really gonna set this off and make it not look like two by fours is what we're gonna do for the top. I went ahead and resawed a whole bunch more two by fours, basically into thick veneers. And I'm gonna throw them in the laser here and we're gonna cut out these pentagons. We're gonna do this technique called pentag pentagonal? Pentagonal. We're gonna do this technique called pentagonal tiling. And I'm gonna glue all of these pieces onto a piece of plywood, but I'm gonna leave space in there. And I'm gonna use the vacuum bag to glue them onto the plywood. And then we're gonna fill that space with black epoxy, which is going to match the black lines on the front doors. This is freaking cool. This does not look like two by fours. Holy cow. I'm blown away. I went ahead and mortised the space for some hinges, dyed everything this cherry color, added the hinges, installed the shelves, attached the top and some poles. This is in direct response to all of the comments that I get saying I use walnut way too much in my projects. Anybody who enters our house and sees this will never in a million years think that this was made by two by fours. This looks phenomenal. I am freaking blown away by how good this came out. If you think that I use too many expensive tools in this project, then watch this where I only use two inexpensive handheld power tools. Also, I made this bench with nothing but two by fours.